Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cannabis Journal Club. Just to guys, give you guys a little breakdown. Uh, Cannabis Journal Club is where we review and interpret United States cannabis patents and scientific journals with concise overviews of complex scientific literature in an understandable and easy to consume manner to expose the knowledge hidden in this scientific literature. We do not cl uh, claim any medical utility. And of these government patents or scientific articles, what we advise you to do is to obtain your own copies uh, of these uh, public uh, documents. And we will often have them um, linked in the description of each show that you're watching. So we'll make it very easy for you uh, to access that. And then you can share them with your doctors as well. And that's kind of what we're looking for. So I want to welcome Dr. Allen to the show. He's going to drop some gems on us. And uh, the floor is yours, Dr. Allen. Nice to see you. Good morning. Yes, I'm Dr. David Allen, and my co-host here is Marcus Gary Richardson, a.k.a. Bubble Man, also known as Bubble Man. And this is Budley Green, and Budley Green says Herb is superb. And Amen. That's, that's where we come from. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. Uh, right, well, today we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be talking about a, a, a another patent. So please share with us the number and uh, what this patent is uh, is is going to be about today. All right, thank you. So right to the point. Um, there's two U.S. patents uh, for cannabis and diabetes. They're both labeled the same name: treating or preventing diabetes with cannabidiol. The first patent number is 8,071,641. The second uh, patent is named the same, treating or preventing diabetes with cannabidiol. And it's patent number US 2007-00999-87A1. That came out in 2005. The first one came out in 2011. And... Um, I don't know why they're both named the same. I think it's because uh, basically we're reviewing uh, two lab animal experiments and a human study with it, uh, with this, uh, with this uh, uh, chapter of uh, cannabis uh, journal club. And so uh, both of these patents are by, are authored by Professor Dr. Raphael Meshulam and are out of the uh, University of Jerusalem. And um, it's interesting that they would have two patents on cannabis treating diabetes, and they use the word preventing, which they kind of prove, but it also kind of alludes to a cure to diabetes. And so you'll have to read this yourself to come up to that conclusion. Um, so they mentioned that in these patents that diabetes is the most prevalent endocrine disease worldwide. And the mortality morbidity uh, associated with this is unbelievable because uh, a lot of people go blind. A lot of people have amputations. A lot of people have to go on renal dialysis because of diabetes Massive cost and, to the health system. And the cost is unbelievable. Uh, and so if if we could give you something that would help your diabetes or help you help prevent you to develop diabetes, then uh, we've helped a lot of people. So mm -hmm. the complications to diabetes include a bunch of stuff. Um, blindness, heart attacks, strokes, kidney failure, amputations, uh, and these people uh, that have to go on dialysis, they have to have multiple surgical procedures for venous access so they can uh, put them on dialysis machines. And then there's peritoneal dialysis, too. So there's a lot of surgical procedures. If we can opening, cure opening diabetes, them up to susceptibility of infection, too, I'm guessing. Absolutely. So. Um, uh, so the two experiments they did was the first one was they were trying to do uh, transplants of uh, the beta cells of the pancreas. The beta cells are the ones that produce the insulin. 
And they noticed when they did transplants that the immune system attacked the transplants and it killed all the beta cells. And so they, they studied uh, uh, these transplants and they found out that if they uh, gave the patients cannabis or CBD, that the transplant cells survived. If they didn't give CBD, then almost 100% of them would be dead. And if they did do give them CBD, about 87% of the cells survived. And so this is a, a remarkable uh, finding. And the second uh, animal study they did was they used these uh, specially uh, raised mice. They're called MOD mice. And this mm -hmm. is a strain of mice that develop diabetes within the first month or so of life. And so they're excellent animal model for studying diabetes. And uh, so in the, in the mice, um, they found out that, uh, that uh, they, it delayed the development of diabetes and they have, have a whole lot of evidence. And these patterns are extremely long one of the patterns is like 50 pages. So it's a strain to go through this. And so we read this stuff so you don't have to. Mm, so yeah. uh, we're giving I mean, that's, that's really powerful. Use. That's really powerful. I mean, it's saying that 100% uh, of untreated MOD mice develop diabetes and only 53% of mice treated with CBD develop diabetes. That is insane. That's like half it's the amazing. mice didn't develop diabetes. And so this is a mouse bred to, to that develops diabetes. And if you could decrease this, the incidence of diabetes by 53% in this mouse group, um, and this is just preliminary stuff, they really have not done this on humans. There is a human study uh, called to, the, it's called the NHANES, N-H-A-N-E-S, and it has a Roman numeral three behind it. So NHANES three, and this is a human study where they found that uh, people that were using cannabis uh, had a 66% decrease in the incidence of diabetes than the people that weren't using cannabis. So that's a human study. And um, so, uh, they found that the lowest glucose levels were found in the group of people that had the highest prevalence of marijuana use. And, and non-users had two to four times more likely to develop diabetes as marijuana users. Wow. And uh, this, you, the use of, of CBD had no, was not associated with any other diseases like, uh, it didn't cause any heart failure or any other trouble. So it's safe to use in large doses and even given chronically. So uh, this is not hard evidence that CBD stops all diabetes, but it's, it's kind of a bunch of indications that uh, it can have a major effect and more human studies will, will be done in the future, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But since CBD is so safe, and you can't hurt yourself by taking CBD according to the science that we know so far. And so if you, if you think that you have diabetes or you're getting to be where your sugar's higher, it would, it, I would definitely put CBD in my diet. And um, so none of these studies are what happens when you eat cannabis or eat hemp. So hemp may actually be a better medicine than marijuana in a bunch of different uh, disease states. And we don't know which state is which. Uh, it actually seems that THC and CBD work in conjunction with each other. And uh, most diseases are, are helped with a combination of these two products rather than uh, isolates. But since 
uh, CBD doesn't get you high and you can take uh, a boatload of it and not hurt yourself, then uh, really the government should be doing studies on what is the incidence of diabetes when you eat cannabis or eat hemp. And so that will be done in the future. And uh, so we're trying to give people evidence that they can show their doctors, because if you ask your doctor, do you know about the two U.S. patents on cannabis or, or CBD and, and diabetes? They won't have any idea that this even exists. So you will have more information than your physician does because they don't teach this in medical school. Um, and I know that because I did the study. It's called Ignorance is Not Bliss. It's in Cannabis Digest. And we called, my office called 157 medical schools. And we asked them if they're teaching this science. And only 13% of the medical schools even mention this science. And nobody has organized courses. And so it's very likely if you're a student of cannabis that you may know more medical science about this than your physicians and your heart surgeon so well there's a, there's uh, always this protective component and and definitely big shout out to uh you know Raphael Mashulam uh I was going to put my picture up with him when we originally mentioned him so I'll put my picture up here here I am at the ICRS in Leiden Holland meeting meeting the 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 man himself and for those of you that don't know about Raphael Mashulam you can go down that rabbit hole very, very cool. But even at the end of yeah. his study, in conclusion, they said marijuana use was associated with a decreased prevalence of diabetes. Prospective studies on humans and animals need to be clean to need to be completed, and they do not recommend the use of marijuana for patients at risk for diabetes. They just did this study that showed you could reduce <laughs> it by fifty three percent in mice that were bred yeah. to get diabetes. They're, yeah, they're, they're afraid just, to say that. Oh, my God. And and God bless them. They have to be. I get that. But this is what Dr. Allen and I are trying to get past this this confusion and this. Can you imagine reading this patent and going through it and then at the end coming and saying they don't recommend me doing this? It's like, <laughs> but the patent said that it reduced the and, and I don't think people can wrap their heads around of the importance of these mice that were bred to get diabetes are way more susceptible than the human race population getting diabetes. Some are more susceptible, some are less susceptible, but yeah. it's not like every human being gets diabetes within a month of being born. So you got to think that that is a, that, that number of 47% that didn't get it must have been, it, it would be way higher in mice that weren't bred to get diabetes. And if you guys don't know about Dr. Mashulam, you should definitely learn about him. I believe he should be put forth for a sainthood because of his work. Saint Mashulam. Certainly was like a saint when I met him. Just the kindest, kindest man. Uh, God, he must have been 90 something years old there when I when I met him. So really cool. Uh, great breakdown on that patent. I'm sure we'll have a Q&A potentially towards the end of the week where if you guys and I'm sure, listen, brain tumors and, uh, you know, some of the other stuff we've covered antioxidants. This diabetes one is a big one. An enormous amount of people suffer from or know loved ones and close family members who suffer from type 1 and 2 diabetes. This is very interesting information. I don't need a doctor to tell me that I consume cannabis orally every day. I do that for the preventative aspects that I don't even really know 100% scientifically what they are. But I know that if cannabis is a part of this endocannabinoid uh, cannabinoid signaling system it's 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 got to be preventative as much as it is medicinal what all right well thank you very much for having us today and we hope that people can use this information for their families so i recommend putting cannabis in your diet
I also recommend that. I'm not a doctor, but I have played one on TV. Isn't that what Marcus, uh, what's his name, used to say? I'm, a, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Anyway, we'll finish it with a Budley Green quote. And Budley Green says, herb is superb. So thanks a lot for watching the Cannabis Journal Club. Thanks to Dr. Allen for sharing his knowledge as always. And uh, we'll see you at the end of the week for the Q&A. Yeah. Peace out, and everybody. remember, Ja over evil. God over evil. Live it. Live it. See you next week.